meditate on our theme, I thought about some major changes that related to man's dwelling with his creator throughout the scripture. First of all, man was dust. Genesis 2 says that God formed him. Man was but a sculpture. But God breathed into him and he became a living soul. God put air in him and changed him. The air was God's breath and the change was that man became a living soul. The second change was in Genesis 3 when man sinned by choosing to disobey God and eat the fruit from the tree of knowledge. This change had a threefold result. Man was cursed by sin. There was a mortgage or a death grip placed on man and the earth, creating our need for redemption because somebody had to pay that mortgage to set us free. It also separated God and man. The scripture says that God walked in the garden that he created for man to tend to. The word declares then that God drove man from the, ark, from the garden, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. That's Genesis 3 and 22. This tree of life is not heard of again in scripture until the very last chapter of the Bible, a mere 13 or 19 verses from that last amen. But we'll get there in under 12 minutes. <laughs> The third major change related to man and his creator was in Exodus 35. The change was that God told Moses to construct a tabernacle in the wilderness. God was giving man a chance once again to dwell with him. He had given them the law to show them how to be acceptable and how to be compatible with his presence. You see, God always desires to dwell with us, but our God never, never tolerates sin. This tabernacle in the wilderness was a foreshadowing of our redemption. It represented Christ. Some of the elements of the temple were gold, which represented the deity of Christ. Silver, which represented the redemptive work of Christ. Brass, which represented the suffering judgment of Christ. The blue showed that he was the son of God. The purple showed his position as king, for he was royalty. The scarlet showed that he was the sacrificial lamb of God. The white represented his purity and his righteousness. The goat's hair represented his prophetic mantle. The ram skin represented his priestly mantle. The badger skin was his humanity. The acacia wood proved that he was from the branch of Jesse. The olive oil was his anointing because our God was full of the Holy Spirit. The tabernacle was also a place where man under strict purification and sanctification could dwell in the very presence of his creator. A change was in the air. Yeah. What was that air? Well, ruach is the Hebrew word for air. It literally means breath of God. But ruach is an onomatopoeia, which is a word that imitates what it describes, like the word buzz. So the word sounds like what it is. The Jewish tradition teaches us that on the Day of Atonement, the high priest went into the Holy of Holies and the curtains of the temple would move in and would move out. They would expand and contract as the priest pled with God and sprinkled that blood on the mercy seat. The people standing without would hear the sound. Rule. Ak. Rule. Ak. This Hebrew word comes from the sound they heard with their own ears, which was the breath of God. Ruach was the air. A change was in the air. The fourth major change related to man and his creator was in Matthew 1, where it says that Mary conceived of the Holy Ghost. The change was that God sent his son to pay that mortgage on mankind. This was accomplished at Calvary's cross. Man can now be redeemed through the shed blood of Christ. But the earth is not yet redeemed and remains under that grip of sin until the end of the Great Tribulation, when Satan is bound for a millennium or a thousand years. But set that thought aside for later. Again, the change was that God wrapped his own son in flesh and placed him in the body of a woman. The scripture says that he would be called Emmanuel, God with us. God loved his treasures so much. He loved mankind so much that again, he was making a way to dwell with us, God with us. The heir, she conceived of the Holy Ghost, which is the breath of God. In John 20 and 22, Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. A change was in the air. The fifth change in regards to man and his creator was in Acts 2 and 2, where there appeared the sound of a rushing mighty wind, 
which was the Holy Ghost. He filled the room and manifested himself as cloven tongues of fire and filled them. That was the air. The change, this is where the Jewish age ended and the church was born at Pentecost. Remember in Matthew 11 and 13, Jesus said, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. In John 3 and 29, John the Baptist himself said, he that has the bride is the bridegroom. He was talking about Jesus. But the friend of the bridegroom, himself the friend, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because the bridegroom's voice. This, my joy, therefore, is fulfilled, John the Baptist said. John acknowledged that he was not a part of the bride, the church, but rather a friend of the bridegroom because he was a part of the Jewish age. This is why all the prophets in the law prophesied until John. John was the last prophet of the Jewish age. And after that, a change. The church was born at Pentecost. A change was in the air. I want to go through. But here's the scripture that I'm after. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. Yes. To conform means to comply or to go along with. And Paul was saying, don't comply with this sinful world, which is still under a mortgage. This world is not redeemed, but you, you are redeemed. A change was in the air. So if then we are redeemed, and if then we are but sinners saved by grace and bought with a price, and if then we believe that Jesus paid that price, and if then we believe that, that he was without sin and he was a perfect sacrifice, and if then we believe that the tomb was empty on that third day, and if then we believe that he is seated at the right hand of the Father and makes intercession for us, then we have been filled with that air of change. We are different than we would have been had we been left alone in our sin. We ought not be waiting for the atmosphere around us to change us. It's the atmosphere within us, which is the Holy Ghost, the breath of God, the air within us. That's where that excellent jewel of change is. But how do we change the air? We preach Christ. We preach him with our lives. We preach him with our words. We tell people Jesus can save you from your sin. We tell them that we were once sinners, but Jesus set us free from that grip. We ask them if they want to be saved. We ask them if they want to know that Jesus that we love and hold so dear. That's putting change in the air. Matthew 10 and 27 said we should be preaching from the rooftops. Mark 16 and 15 said we're to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. A change can be in the air, but are we willing to put it there? And we should all be looking for one last change. 1 Corinthians 15 51 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. After the white throne judgment, after death and hell are cast into the lake of fire, and after those who were not changed and whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life are thrown into that lake of fire, the scripture says that a holy city, a new Jerusalem, yes. shall come down out of heaven. Revelation 21 and 3 says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. I encourage you tonight to be changed. Be transformed. Do away with envy. Do away with strife. Do away with pride. Stop being puffed up. Do away with sexual immorality. Do away with the division. Purge out that old leaven of sin that you might be a new lump, so that you will be worthy to eat of that tree of life which reappears in the holy city that is spoken of in Revelation 22. And on either side of the river there was a tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, nor light of the sun, but the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign 